Art at Allendale Elementary. I'm going to show you a fun project that you can do at home by just using lines. So grab any kind of paper and a pen and you're going to start by just drawing lines. I start in the corner and just make a few lines. Then with the white space, you're going to go back in and fill in that space with more lines. They can be short or long, thin or thick, however you choose. And you keep going until you have your whole space filled. You can use this design to create backgrounds for things, bookmarks. You can start with a quote and then add lines around it. You can even draw pictures. The sky's the limit. Just have fun creating and see what cool things you can make. Hi friends, Miss Cameron from Clovercroft Elementary here. Here's how to make your own air dry clay at home using only three ingredients. Baking soda, cornstarch, and water. You'll need half a cup of cornstarch, one cup of baking soda, and three quarters of a cup of cold water. Stir together on low to medium heat until it forms a ball. Transfer onto a plate while it cools down and cover with a wet paper towel. Next, you're ready to knead your clay out. Let your sculptures dry for 24 hours. Store any extra clay in an airtight container. Hope y'all enjoy. Hi artists, it's Mrs. Janning from Crockett Elementary. The next time you create, try making artist trading cards and a sketchbook to hold them. Artist trading cards are miniature works of art that you can collect, trade, or gift in the future. Explore and layer materials to make each card unique. You can also make a pocket sketchbook to hold them and your drawings. Take a sheet of paper, fold the top to the bottom and crease. Next, fold a portion of the bottom upward and that's your pocket. If you would like two pockets, reverse the top fold and finally fold left to right. Make a bunch of these and stack them. Use a rubber band, a stapler to bind the pages together. You can place your artist trading cards inside and journal and draw on the others. Enjoy! Hey girls, this is Mrs. Alvar, the art teacher at College Grove Elementary. I love to be outdoors and exploring our beautiful world. My tip is to use found items in nature to create beautiful pieces of artwork, like the piece that I've created right here. When you are finished, snap a picture and then leave your beautiful piece for others to find and enjoy. Hi art friends! This is Miss B from Chapman's Retreat Elementary School in Spring Hill. I wanted to share with you today an idea that you can do at home with crayons or markers or whatever you have there. I was inspired by the tulip fields that are blooming in Holland right now to create a color and a line study. So I took my sketchbook and I created a blue color study, a line study with a lot of different crazy kind of lines. And then I did a line study with color and added flowers on top with a black Sharpie. Hey guys, my name is Mrs. Josephson and I'm the art teacher at Creekside Elementary School. My tip is go green. Go ahead and dig around your house in the recycling bin and find things that you could dip in paint and then later press on paper. You can do things that are abstract like you see here or you could turn it into something and layer add color with other materials that you have at home. Have fun everybody and enjoy going green. Hey friends, Miss G here from Edmondson Elementary School. Keep your art space clean. Hi, this is Mrs. Catone from Fairview Elementary. I'm going to show you how to make a pop-up today. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut on the straight line on the index card after you fold it in half. Fold it up on both sides, down, in the back, down again. Open it up a little bit and put your finger through it and it will open up like that. And you could create something like this that says, what does the sweet pea say? I miss you. Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Trakis from Heritage Elementary School. Here's an idea. Take a look at artist Andy Goldsworthy. He creates artworks of things in nature. 
So go outside and find some things such as leaves, sticks, rocks, or flowers and arrange them in a really cool way outside. Take a look at mine right here. Hey guys, this is Miss Gallagher from Jordan Elementary and I have a fun art scavenger hunt for you to try while you're at home. You need to make sure your parents are okay with you finding objects around your house for the hunt. If they are, here's what to do. You're going to need to make a color wheel like this. You can use crayons, color pencils, or paint like I did. The most important part is to make sure that you write out each of the color names. That way everyone knows what to look for. Then you can divide up into teams with your siblings or your parents. Or you can challenge yourself to see how fast you can find all the objects of the color wheel. I hope y'all have fun. Hey everybody, this is Virginia Nix with Kenrose Elementary. Next time you're in the mood to paint, try something new. Try painting with markers. I've got two tips and then it's your turn. Tip number one is draw something with a washable marker, the way you're used to drawing. Then get a wet paintbrush paint on top of those marker lines and look what happens. You get a really pretty painted effect. Tip number two is making your own watercolor paint from old washable markers you may have around the house. Get some water, soak your old washable markers for a little while, and you did it. Ta-da! Homemade watercolor paints. Okay artists, now it's your turn. I can't wait to see what you make. Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walter here from Livescomb Elementary to give you a few tips on how to make your realistic drawings look awesome. No ruler at home? Find a book and trace the edge for a straight line. If you are doing realistic drawing with a person or an object, make sure you color all in the same direction and don't forget to keep looking at what you're drawing so that you don't assume you know what it looks like. Like a portrait, you have to keep looking at the person so that you know it ends up looking like the person you'd like it to when you're done. When you're all done with your artworks, if they don't look complete, make your own background design. And if you need inspiration for designs, look around your house, add maybe some clothes or some books for some cool design idea. Hi you guys, this is Miss Hamilton from Longview Elementary School. I'm going to show you how to tie-dye coffee filters that can be turned into flowers, garland, or used for a drawing background. First, you're going to take a coffee filter, fold it three times to a pizza slice shape, then color both sides with washable markers. You can use any designs, shapes, patterns, or colors. I've already started this one, but I'm going to grab some water and a brush and completely wet both sides so that the colors run. Completely wet both sides. Then you can unfold it, let it dry on a piece of scrap paper, and it will turn into a beautiful tie-dye that you can use for whatever you would like. It's Mrs. Hitchcock from Nolansville and Clovercroft Elementary. Bubble printing is an activity that you can do at home with things that you have around the house. You will need paper, dish soap, food coloring, a straw, and a tray to help contain the mess. First add dish soap to your container and stir, stir, stir. Add a couple drops of food coloring and stir some more. Next, you're going to blow bubbles into your water. Lay your paper down and rub, rub, rub. You can keep doing this with more colors, layering the bubbles for a really fun effect. Ta-da! You just made a bubble print. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Homan from Perry Creek Elementary and I have an art idea for you today using one of our resources from WCS. Finding objects around your house and turning them into art. For example, I took this drink carrier from one of our takeout meals and with a little paint and creativity, I turned it into a caddy for my art supplies. What do you have at your house that you could use for art? Hey everybody, this is Miss Haynes from Sunset Elementary. I know that right now we are all trying to get outside, so let's bring some art outside. You know you can always use sidewalk chalk art to make art. Something cool is you could find some rocks and paint them. You could go on a little walk with your family and leave rocks for other people in the neighborhood to find. Or you could ask your friends to leave some rocks for you to find as well. Just get outside, be creative. Remember, art doesn't have any rules. Just try and have some fun and get outdoors. Hi boys and girls, this is Miss Hendren from Trinity Elementary. I know many of you love to build with Legos or magnet tiles or building blocks. So here are three building challenges for you to try out while you're at home. Challenge number one, build a mode of transportation. For example, a train, a car, a bus, a motorcycle, or even a spaceship. 
Challenge number two, build something from nature. For example, a rainforest, a beach, a mountain, a rainbow, or even an animal. Challenge number three, build a structure. For example, a windmill, a house, a store, a restaurant, or even your school. Whatever you decide to build, have fun and be creative. Hi, I'm Miss Spain from Winstead Elementary. Whether you use all the great ideas from the WCS Resource Guide, Pinterest, YouTube, or any other resource, I hope you're creating. Take this time to experiment with any materials you have at home. Use your imagination and practice your skills. Don't put too much pressure on yourself when thinking about the finished product. Just enjoy the process and getting to create. Remember, art is good for the soul. Take care. This is Mrs. Taylor from Walnut Grove Elementary. I know you have some of your favorite books at your house, so let's take one of them. This is one of my favorite, The Monkster at the End of This Book, starring lovable furry old grower. Hello, everybody. What did that say? There would be a monster? Yes, so let's make one. You can take any paper that you want, whatever color, cut you out a body and a head, and then cut out some ovals and circles for your eyes and nose and mouth and make you a cute little monster that can be your friend all day. Enjoy. Hi everyone, this is Miss Turner from Thompson Station Elementary and today I'm gonna to give you some tips on how to set up your own still life right at home. So the first thing you need to know is that you definitely have to use objects that are still. So my sweet cat would not be a good choice but pretty much anything else around your house will work. You could use something like a shoe, a rock, I have a feather, jewelry, mugs, I even have fruit and a plant. The second thing is you wanna find a table that you can set these up on. Maybe not a table that you know you're gonna to have to clear off to eat dinner or something like that. Find a bedside table or a space that isn't used. And then the final thing is you want to do maybe an odd number of objects, three or five or six, Seven. So I'm going to remove some of these. Let's see. I'm going to keep my plant, do my mug, my banana, even maybe like my beads right there, and maybe keep an orange and get rid of that. And now I'm all ready to go. Hey students, I'm Miss Ingrish, art teacher at Grasson Elementary. I thought it'd be fun to make a pop art pet portrait like the one seen here by Andy Warhol. So what you do is first you want to draw a picture of your pets. And I have a cat, so I colored a bright pink cat. And or if you, another way to do it would be to take a photograph of your pet and color it with a bright color and glue it in some different color pieces of construction paper for that pop of color. Hi artists, this is Mrs. Lee from Longview Elementary. Have you ever used your imagination to find pictures within the clouds? You can do the same thing with a piece of paper. Just ask a family member to make any mark on your paper and use your imagination. My daughter made this mark. Don't forget you can turn your paper sideways and see what it can turn into. I decided to turn mine into a cloud with a rainbow. But does this drawing look complete? Did I fill in all the space? Don't forget to take your drawing to the next level and fill all the space in. I hope you have fun using your imagination. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Napier from Mill Creek Elementary and today I'm going to give you some tips about pointillism, which is a type of artwork created by Georges Seurat. First, you wanna start off by drawing a landscape. Maybe it's where you are. I use my backyard. Or, you can draw a place you really wish you could go right now, but can't. Then, you color it in by using just dots. That's pointillism. You can use many different materials to create this. And the one that you see completed here, I used markers. But you can also use paint and Q-tips, which is a really fun way to do it. Hey artists, it's Miss Weekly from Nolansville. Today I want to talk to you about breaking creative roadblocks. So if you've ever had a blank piece of paper and you don't know what to draw, I have some ideas for you. So I've broken it down into four categories for you. Artists draw what they see, 
what they remember, what they imagine, and what they feel. We are currently in a crazy part of history and there is no better time to be making art to remember what's going on in your daily life right now. So you can go off of this list and hopefully that will help you if you're ever having a creative roadblock. Hi everybody, just wanted to send you a quick message encouraging you to continue to be creative. Um, you know, crazy times sometimes produces the best artwork. So keep using your crayons and your pencils and your paint if you have it. And um, I don't know, you know how I like vacuum cleaners. You could always um, do a picture of a vacuum cleaner. It could be a big, ugly vacuum cleaner that has sucked you up and you're stuck inside. And you could draw what it looks like inside or you could draw what the vacuum cleaner looks like, or you could draw your, your dad coming to open up the vacuum cleaner and take you out of it. Whatever. But uh, see what you can come up with and hope to see you someday soon. Hi, this is Mrs. Johnson with Oakview Elementary. Um, I was on a walk and I found this sidewalk art that inspired me to make my own abstract art. I don't have sidewalk chalk right now, so I decided to use other art materials to make my abstract art. Here's my piece of art that I created. I used a marker to draw my lines and shapes to get my design down on my paper. After I got the design down, I colored in my shapes with twistable crayons um, and colored some solid and I did some patterns. You can use any art material that you have, and I had fun doing this. I hope you're able to make some art while you're at home. Hey everyone, this is Andrew Schuster, art teacher at Westwood Elementary. I'm going to be giving you a few super quick ideas of things to illustrate while at home. The next time you get bored drawing at home, try challenging yourself by creating an impromptu still life. Go around your home, find a bunch of objects you would like to draw, Arrange them on a surface any way that you want and try to draw it as best as you can. Here are the objects that I found. Cat toy Mike Wazowski mug. Here's the quick illustration of the still life that I did. I'm really looking forward to seeing all the creative things that you are doing at home. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.